Hello fellow yarn lovers, welcome back to my channel. Here I've got something fabulous which I'm going to show you what I did to make this. So I've put some sleeves on this jacket and I think it looks quite fabulous. So this is going to be a long one, I think it's like maybe 50-ish minutes now. Sorry, I had a lot to do. Um, but yeah, so I'm going to, I'm not going to go an in-depth tutorial on how to do the daisies but I'm going to link one below on what I kind of followed and then went off on a tangent. I'm going to link a video below which will show you how to do something like this. Okay, and then I'm going to take you through exactly what I did to stitch this on and I'm going to show you exactly how I make cuffs for like sleeves and also this is what I do for hexagon cardigans. Without further ado, I'm going to send you back off into the past to past me um, who probably has no idea what I'm going to do because this was literally like a spare the moment thought so yeah, enjoy the process. Hello, I'm assuming that future me who was holding a beautiful jacket has sent you back in the past to past me, which has absolutely no idea how I'm gonna do this. Okay, uh, right, so the story, I bought two gilets on Vinted. I think they were like two or three pounds each. So my first one here, I got a Henry Holland one. So this one, a nice blue denim, a couple of quid. Uh, the sleeves look like they've got some kind of reinforcing of the stitching on. So I'm pleased with that. It fits well. Uh, I think I might rewash it before I attach anything to it, but it's just been hung in the wardrobe for a good few weeks. So yeah, that's gilet number one, which is fabulous. And now, right, so gilet number two is this black denim gilet. Uh, it's originally from Next, so really good quality. Um, yeah, these sleeves, well, the, the armholes here, they are really reinforced. So these are going to hold whatever I stitch onto it quite fabulously. Hopefully, fingers crossed, she says. Um, so yeah, right. How am I going to do this? There are only two other videos on YouTube that I can find where they attach sleeves to a denim jacket. The people in those videos don't attach them a way that I'm going to do it. So one lady kind of gets some... Actually, I think they, they both use thread to attach them where I just want to do like a row of single crochet on here. So when I was thinking about doing this, because it's been in my head for a while, because obviously I bought these a good few weeks ago and they've been in my wardrobe a while. They smell like they need a wash. They don't, they smell nice, but not fresh. So I want them to be fresh. Um, so what I'm going to do to attach mine is I've took the smallest crochet hook I have. I don't know if you can see. It's a two millimeter. Okay. Uh, I did think that I was going to need a smaller hook, but apparently I'm not going to because if I'm going to do a row of single crochet on here, this like just pierces through, okay? It pierces through that one and it pierces through the other one. So I could end up with two jackets. How good would that be? Uh, also, I do not need to go yarn shopping because I have got a beautiful stash here, which I've acquired over the last year that I've been crocheting. So I'm thinking with this one, I'm going to do maybe like an, an autumn theme or like a, a darker theme. I don't really want to go spooky because I don't want to be limited to just wearing it like around October. Maybe I would throw on in springtime and it can still look a little bit like, I don't know, edgy, whatever. Um, it can still look nice in spring. So I'm going to look at my dark colours to go with this. Oh, the blue is pretty good. I like the purple. Um, yeah, so that's what I might do with that one. And then if I do, if I do do two of them, um, I'm probably going to make this one like a bit more like spring themed. So what I'm thinking, so maybe I'll do like not just normal granny squares that go down the top of the arm. I might put like, I don't know, like daisy or sunflower granny squares and then have those just running down the arm. And then the rest of the like the underneath just to be like a normal granny stitch or granny square. I could even make it a solid stitch. I don't know. I'm not really sure at this point. I've literally just probably sent you back into the past and I'm like sat there in the future with these beautiful jackets which I've probably said a lot of swear words to make and frogged and stuff. So yeah, let's get started. I just actually forgot like a really important point. So what I'm going to do is I am going to measure. So I'm going to measure this. I have a tape measure somewhere. I'm going to find it. Ah, here. Did anybody else like have a nan that would have a sweetie tin um, and it would just never be full of sweets? Like even though I'm nowhere near like being like an old person, she says. 
Um, I am going to be that nan who just has like tins and tins with no sweeties. But um, I'm a tape measure. Let's measure this. Get off me. Let's measure this. Uh, we'll do inches. Inches are easier. Okay, right. So from top to pit. How many inches? From top to pit. She says ten times. All right. This one. Uh, it's got a bit of a curve in it, so I'm going to give it a bit of leeway. So twelve ish inches. Um, which means 24 circumference of the armhole so what I'm going to do is I will make a panel just like a rectangle I'll do a cuff afterwards um because I cannot do cuffs when the the project is like flat and not like you know like this I could not make this flat this is not one thing I've made by the way this, I didn't make this this is like Marks and Spencers it's not just any jumper uh, right so yeah I'm gonna make um, a rectangle which is basically 24 inches wide. How long are my arms? Um, I think my arms are about 26. Oh, no, not 26. That would give me massive arms. Uh, my arms look like I would like the cuff to stop at about 22. We're basically going to do something nice and flat and rectangular that is 22 by 24. Um, that's what I'm going to do. And then I'm going to do a row of single crochets. I'm going to attach it using my favourite stitch, which I did for Barbie cardigan, which I do for everything because I don't like sticky out seams. Um, so yeah, this is not an in-depth tutorial, but I'm going to show you how I attach it at least. Um, now, where do I start? I like you. You're pretty. I could make red flowers. Do you match that one? Oh my god, sparkles. <gasps> sparkles! Wait, I thought I had more sparkles than this. <laughs> Maybe I need to go shopping. Oh dear. Okay, so I love Pinterest. <gasps> I love this. Oh my god. Okay, I actually made a baby blanket for a friend about a year ago um, using this these kind of squares. So these are really nice. Um... And it's like, I know how to do these. I don't know how to follow a pattern, but I'm sure that there was a YouTube tutorial that I followed on how to make each square. That yellow was beautiful. Uh, do I have all of these colours, actually? Um, yellow? Check. Orange? Check. Pink? Check. Uh, and they just used the same yellow for the centre. Ooh, I like this. <gasps> what if I did this in blue? Oh my god, what if I did it in blue and purple? Yes, yes. Okay, right. Ideas are done. Uh, ooh, what if I made the whole thing with just daisies, like the whole sleeve as daisies? That's going to take a while. What time is it? It's quarter to four. Hmm. Right, I just need to think to myself, do I need to leave the house today? Because if I start this, I'm just going to become obsessed. Oh, I like this idea. Ooh, I just thought I might just make the sleeves and then just choose which gilet they fit. Let's see what happens. Okay, we're going to need you. We're going to need this bad boy. We're going to block things before we sew them all together. And um, today the challenge is to weave ends in as I go. If I don't sew ends in as I go, uh, the world just kind of like descends into chaos. And then I do not want to weave in all of the ends. And this can just hang up somewhere nice and pretty in the background until I feel like weaving it ends, which will be the 12th of never. I'm going to just start making squares, so I'll update you on my progress. Let me just move all the rubbish. So it is currently uh, 5 2. It's currently 5 to 4. Um, let's see what I can get done. I found a great tutorial on YouTube uh, by Play Hoogie With Me. Um, so she, like, it was just kind of a refresh because I've made daisies before. I'll link that tutorial down in the description below. Um, so I've just got like a bunch of uh, centres at the moment. Uh, I'm going to weave in my ends as I go so that I don't have to do it at the end. And then when I snip and weave in that final piece of sleeve, I can just put it straight on. And I don't have to think, oh, I've got so many ends to weave in. No, I'm going to weave them in as I go. So before I do the layer of petals with my lovely white shade here, 
which has just dragged everything off my desk. Um, I am going to weave in these little ends. Okay, so update. Um, I've just done a few like centers of these. Um, we've got about 10 here. And then I worked up my first square and I put this clock down. <laughs> I worked up my first square. So I've not cut it from the, um, the skein yet. But I think it looks all right. Uh, I measured it out, so I'm going to block these. So it's measuring once it's blocked. This will be about five inches. So because I said it was going to be something like 22 inches by 24 inches, I think what I'll do is just do like four by five. Um, and then if I need any extra for the length, I can just pick a colour and just extend it. Or yeah, I don't actually know what colour I'm going to do the cuffs. I guess I'll I'll see once I've done this, but. Yeah, that's how they're looking. Uh, I think I made it too poofy. I didn't follow the YouTube tutorial that I was watching to the absolute T. Um, it just kind of reminded me of how to do a daisy granny square. So I just did like five treble crochets, like this is American terms. So I did five trebles. There are 12 double crochets in the center. I just chained four, 12 double crochet. And then into each space between the 12, I made 12 petals. And those are done with um, five treble crochets, which are like, I don't complete the stitch and then I join them all at the end. Um, and then I just followed, well, yeah. And then I just did that. I will link a tutorial below on how to get something like this because I didn't plan on this video being like a full on tutorial. I just kind of want to show you what I'm doing. So yeah, there's number one. Uh, so that means I've got, oh, if I'm doing four by five, that means I've got to do 20 of these per sleeve, which means I have to do another 39. Okay, I guess I'll see you when I've done 39. I'm actually balancing you on a pile of wool or yarn, balancing you on a pile of yarn right now. Uh, right, okay, it has been, it's been about two hours since I uh, started this off. I made one square and I sewed in my ends, yes. Um, and I'm pretty happy with it. So I think I'm gonna do another 39 of these because that's how many it's gonna take. Um, I don't know how long it's gonna take, but I have done, done another 39 of these. They're all over the place now. I'm gonna drop one. Oh my God. Turns out I've actually done 41 because there was two on the floor. Anyway, yeah, it's always good to have spares. Um, so yeah, I have enough, I have enough like circle things, like flower centers to push on with the project. So um, yeah, let's make the petals for each one of these. All right, I've got an update of where I'm up to. I have done 10 flowers. So yeah, that's where, that's where we're up to with 10 flowers. Um, I did pull out an orange from behind me because I'm trying to just like shop my stash for this and I found Hayfield Bonus DK in Cantaloupe and I actually really like the way that it looks with the purple and also with the the pink. So I kind of like this colour with it as well. This is Aspen by um, Stylecraft Special DK. So I like those but like I've got dressed and I discovered that there's two yarn shops in Berry, So... I think like I'm dressed I might as well go I'll have a browse I actually bought I bought this wool for a future project and I need to colour match the green so this little squish ball is coming along with me and we're going to colour match a green because I'm going to make a cardigan with this My, oh, you guys are going to love the video with this um, it will be a full in-depth tutorial with this um, so yeah let's go to Berry and find some yarn okay quick update I went to Berry and um, the market was closed so I could not even look at the shops in the market. Uh, and then I went to this other place, I can't remember its name, but they just had like a wall of like really discounted wool that was like 99 pence a bottle of like yarn, not wool. And I had a feel of it and it was like, it ugh, made my skin crawl. It was like, I don't even know how to describe it. I didn't look at the, the ingredients on the wool. Ingredients, like it's food. I didn't look at the, like what it's made of, but when you like squeeze the ball, oh, I, I just got a shiver and I was like, no. I'm not wearing that on my skin. It was like a, oh, it's like a bad silky feeling. I can't describe it. So that was a no. Um, they didn't really have like the colors I wanted anyway. They had a very, very sparse selection. Um, so yeah, I'm actually thinking 
I'm not too far away from black sheep wools and I absolutely adore black sheep wools like it is just like well it's the biggest wool shop in the UK I think um so I think I might just dodge across to black sheep wool yeah go and like spend a whole bunch of money in there so here we go okay we've arrived at black sheep wools oh I've actually got like fluff on my face um I'm excited I'm probably gonna spend more than I need to but it's fine we all love a good stash trying to resist the urge to buy everything I got some oranges place is huge like there's just wool everywhere I've got some colors but I'm not sure what I'm gonna get okay I have a few colors this is like another section in here I love it here Okay, I got five balls of wool and it was £10.35, so I have no idea like what orange I'm going to go with, but um, I mean, I'm not going to say no to fill a moustache up because like, I will use them because like I just make random things all the time. So this green I matched, I'm going to do collar and cuffs for the Tinkerbell hexagon that I'm going to do you guys a whole tutorial for. Um, I grabbed another wisteria because I seem to have like maybe half a ball of it left and I don't know if it was enough so yeah it's a different dye batch but I mean it doesn't matter because the panels are not next to each other you're not gonna see um, so yeah the hunt still continues though because there's like this really like appley green in, in this one that I'm gonna use for Tinkerbell and there's just nothing like I've literally been to a massive wool shop and there is absolutely nothing to match it so yeah see what we're gonna do for that one but yeah, i'm gonna go home and i'm gonna make another like 29 daisies right okay i have just got to the end of the first ball of white it has made excuse my cereal it's made around about 28 and a half flowers so it's a good job i had two of these um so yeah if you are gonna make flowers with um something that is 300 meters long you are going to probably need two bowls of it because I've still got like another like 12 flowers to go right I have got four one two three four centers left okay I've got my bath full of the other flowers and um because it's sunny here Sneaky's just decided to hang out with me here okay right it has taken like um I don't know it's like six minutes I actually timed it six minutes per like white bit of the flower I've got no nails on so ignore my stubby fingers um yeah so oh, like 40 times six which is uh, like 240 minutes so um yeah that's how long it's taken me to do all of these over the space of like a day so right we are going to put um like borders on them and we're going to turn them into granny squares now because i am doing 20 squares per sleeve i need 20 of these and i've got five colors which means i need to do four of each color for each sleeve so like eight of each color technically so okay on we go right i'm going to give you an update of where i'm up to um right here so i have done uh there is eight here eight here there is seven here because I need to do my last peach melba circle flower thing. So it's gone pretty well blocking them. This is my Etsy block and board. I think it was like £22 on Etsy. Um, I'll link it down below because like block and boards are so handy. Right, I need to do the pink colour. Uh, so I've got a bunch of flowers here in pink. And then I think I might actually do, um, even though I did the centres in yellow, I think I'm going to do like a yellow one as well because I think that the colours all together will look really nice. So yeah, I also did just unbox my Good Vibes yarn mystery bag, which is going to be in another video. So that's going to be in either a video after this one or before this one, depending on how busy I am. Um, but so with these, um, it takes with these patches, it takes me approximately like two minutes to do this bit, six minutes to do that bit, six minutes to do that bit. So it's like 14 minutes to do each, so basically 15 minutes to do each patch. Right, there's 40 patches. There's 15 minutes per patch, which is about 600 minutes, like 10 hours. So all in all, it's probably taken around about 10 hours to do 40 patches. And we haven't even begun to think about the sewing. 
So yeah, I will uh, give you another update when I have made these circles into patches. Okay, so small update. I have now done four colours. I've done eight of each. I accidentally did nine of these, but it's fine. We'll deal with it. Um, and I did a yellow one, but then I don't know if the yellow one actually goes. So I might just end up doing like ten of each of these. And then, yeah, I don't think I'm going to do five colours. I think I'm going to do four colours. So it means ten of each patch. I need to do two more, two more, one more, two more. So seven patches to go. Okay, we have reached the last one. I've got 39 squares here. I haven't woven in my ends. I said I was going to, but um, yeah, forget about that. So, last one. Okay, it's Friday. I started this on Monday. I have worked like sporadically on it. Not like, I've not sat down and like, you know, solidly done this. It's taken me like five days, probably cumulatively, like anywhere up to like 15 hours of like, working on these but I've now right so I decided on four colours and I have made the squares and I have sewed in all the ends so like here is all my ends all done and here are my 40 squares so it's so pretty I've left them to block like overnight all I did was I just um as I was weaving in each end I kind of put them on and then I just sprayed them with like a nice smelling crease release so they smell really nice. I mean, they will be washed eventually when they're on the project and then I'll kind of just like put the whole thing on a coat hanger and then let it dry. So yeah, this is how it's going. It feels like such an achievement to have done 40 Daisy Granny squares and have sewn in all the ends. So now the only ends I will need to sew in are the ones when I put it onto the actual gilet and the ones for the cuffs, because I'm gonna sew them all together and then I'm going to do like a slight decrease on the cuff. Um, I've not even put these like next to the jacket or anything. So I might end up with a few extra squares because I might have made too many. But hey, you know, it's a blanket for future projects. Let's start sewing them together and putting them on the project. Okay, progress. Right, so um, I've just laid it out on the bed. I've took all the, the squares off the pins and I've kind of organised them like just identically. So yeah... Um, I don't want them touching each other like this way or this way, but I don't mind them touching the same colour diagonally. So, and then this is going to be sewed to the top because like this is going to form like the, the arm tube, if you will. So yeah, uh, I think that should work. So now I'm going to join them up. I'm just thinking I might just do mattress stitch with like white thread and then it kind of matches the flowers and then... Even if you can maybe see the stitches, then it's fine because it kind of matches. So, yeah, let's stitch them all together. Please excuse the absolute chaos that's going on right now. Um, right, this is how I'm going to like do the... This is how I'm doing the sewing. So, I basically, I was going to do white and it just didn't look like it suited it. So, whatever colour the patches are, I'm using that. So, any purple ones I can sew to other ones with purple um I've not done that one just yet but uh, so I've kind of gone along like this and then along along like this and then whenever I need to change colors I'm just kind of doing like that knot I can't remember what you call it but that like, you basically pull them and they slide together um so I'm gonna like continue this along there so that's how I've sewed them together just using mattress stitch when you do like back loop back loop I'll show you um like next how I'm gonna how I'm doing this okay I just want to show you guys what method I've used to join my squares so because I've got all different colors I'm basically using the color from one of whichever ones to attach it to everything else so for example I've just joined uh, where is it joined all of these greens so I've joined that green to this one using green thread I've then joined it along here using green. I've joined it up here with green. Then I've gone along with green. Then I've gone along here with green. And now, because I've run out of greens basically, I need to put an orange one here. Okay? So since my orange one is going to go here, I've changed yarn colour. It doesn't matter if there's slight overlappings, and you don't have to do it this way. This is just the way that I've done it because I'm, you know, I'm a bit of a perfectionist sometimes. Um, so yeah, right, with this one I've done, it's basically when 
you would tie the pink to this side and then tie the green to that side and then you would pull them and then both knots come together and it's like indestructible or at least it's supposed to be so now I'm going to join this orange one here so what I'll do is I'm going to be using wrong sides facing each other and then back loops only so if I just pass this over here so these are currently the right sides okay I know they're my right sides because all my little V's are kind of like sticking forward okay so I'm going to just put that wrong side to wrong side and then if I lift it up hopefully this will not go blurry So taking my needle, I need to join this orange one on. So I've come out of there. I'm going to go into the back loop of this pink one in the corner. You don't have to be absolutely perfect because, I mean, as long as they're stitched together pretty securely, you're still going to have a really nice looking garment. So this one matches up to that one. OK, so this is my V. That's the back loop and that's the front loop. So I'm just going to go in the back loop there and I'm going to pull it through and that's going to attach it. OK, so it doesn't matter if this like I'm going to sew a little bit with this green, if it overlaps, that's fine. I'm not too fussed. So I don't know the name of this stitch. I just saw it on TikTok and I was like, yeah, I'll do that. So again, looking at the back loops, this is the back loop of the pink and this is the back loop of the orange. So back loop of the pink, back loop of the orange, and I'm just going to pass it through like that. Okay, this little knot might not want to go through, so I'm just going to give it a bit fiddle and get it through. Yeah. Okay, and then I'm just going to get my needle, bring it back over here, and I'm just going to go back loop of that one, and then back loop of that one. And that's all I'm going to do. Okay. So again, next set of stitches, back loop, back loop and do keep checking like because obviously all your granny squares if you've done it a similar way to me not necessarily daisies in the middle but you might have done granny squares which have like either like five or six clusters on the sides so what you want to do is so I've just done the third like one so I've just done the third stitch of that cluster and that was the top stitch there I just want to make sure that this third one matched up and they did so I'm now going to go into, so we're into the next cluster, I'm going into the back loop of the first stitch and then I'm going to go into the back loop of the first stitch from the orange one. Okay, and I'm just going to keep going like that and just making sure that I've lined up my squares so I'm going into the, the corresponding stitches from each one. Okay, so that's the middle stitch of that one. Okay, then this is the third stitch of that cluster okay and because I don't I don't chain one between my granny clusters then that's I've not got like a one in the middle so I'm literally going from the third stitch of that cluster into the first stitch of this one yeah, that's all I'm doing so I'm going to show you what it looks like once I've done this okay so I'm just in the last back loop of that one last back loop of that one okay just gonna try and unblur it okay good now that's what it looks like okay so I've not used a different color I've just used pink and yeah I don't really care if that overlap overlaps a little bit because to be honest who's gonna stop you in the street and go oh no this green thread traveled into here nobody's gonna do that okay so those are nicely matched up at the bottom there might be a little bit of a like a wibble there but it's fine because now I'm gonna sew with my pink I'm now going to sew what goes underneath. So uh, what does go underneath? It's another orange one. Okay, so I'm literally just going to do the same with this one. Okay, so my pink yarn is not that long, but by that point I might be ready to change colours. So yeah, that's all I've done to stitch them together. Okay, right, I have sewn panel one. I've not attached it at the bottom, I've just got safety pins. So this is how it's looking and I think it might actually be a bit short so I don't know whether or not to like put another row on or if I should just like because I want to decrease it because like it's not sticking like that it's not I don't do flary sleeves I'm not a I'm not a wizard um so yeah I think I'm gonna maybe just use one of these colors and then 
like decrease it and then put a nice cuff on it. Let's see what that looks like. Okay, here's an update. Right, hang on. Oh, it's the hottest day of the year. I'm absolutely boiling. Let me just put my hair up. Hang on. Right, so here is how my sleeveless denim jacket fits. Obviously, I can't do anything about this. This this just happened naturally and it gets in the way of a lot of clothes. But anyway, so this is what my jacket looks like. I finished the sleeves. Oh, right. I've still got a few ends to weave in, um, but that's fine. I'll do that. I said, oh my God, it's hot. It's so hot and I have to do this. Uh, right, so that will go on that one. And this will go on that one. Okay, so they're nice and stretchy. So, there. So this is what the jacket should be like when it's finished, okay? So, it's too hot. What I need to do is, I need to put, um, I'm gonna put a layer of single crochet just with my small hook. I've lost a nail. Um, with my small hook, I think it was like a, a two millimeter hook or something, or 2.5. So it, it pierces through the denim. So I'm gonna single crochet all the way around here. Um, I don't, I might try and count the stitches that I have around here. Actually, what I'm gonna do to these, oh, it's too hot, I'm getting a fuffle. So I will put a layer of single crochet around there, maybe two rows of single crochet with this, just to smarten it up, because obviously I need to put a cuff on it. So with one side, I might just do a couple of rows of single crochet on here as well, just so that when I come to stitch it together, it will, like, it'll sew it up quite nicely. It should look good. So now it's just about deciding what colour I'm going to do the cuff and what colour I'm going to put the single crochets on the jacket. And I think I might go with purple, because like, I love purple. Um, so I think I'll do like two single crochet layers of purple around here, and then the cuff. I could multicolour it, but oh, that's a nice fan. Oh, it's a hot day. It's like 28 degrees outside. Um, I might do maybe just purple cuffs, because I really like that purple, that style craft, special DK wisteria. It's such a nice purple. So yeah, that's where I'm up to. I'm not gonna do this outside because it's absolutely boiling. I'm gonna hide somewhere cool and get that done. All right, I'm gonna give you an update of where I'm up to. Currently, I have done a row of single crochet on here. I'm gonna show you how to do that in a second on that side. So I did a row of single crochet all the way around and then I did another row of single crochet just on top of that. So that's where we're up to. There are currently about 118 stitches around here. So where I've got my sleeves, like just here where the uh, the actual squares end, there wasn't 118 stitches. So I've done five rows and in a couple of those rows I've just added increases in. And how I did that, let's see if I can find one. So just in like random stitches, I would just put two and then keep going with a few like single crochets then another two. And I just built it up so it's kind of somewhere around like 110 to 120 stitches for this one. And then I did the same to the other sleeve and these are ready now to sew on to that side. But I'm going to show you exactly what I did to do the single crochets on here. Okay, right, so because this, I mean, it's a Henley Holland jacket that I've just got off vintage and it's got purple, like, stitchings. It's got purple stitchings on various bits of it. So that's why I chose to do purple, so it kind of ties in. Now, on mine, some of these frayed bits are, like, really, really long, so I'm just going to snip down some of the frayed bits. I'm not cutting into the jacket. I'm literally just, like, cutting these down, just like that so that I can single crochet and that these are not going to pop through the single crochets and make it look a bit, you know, scraggy. Okay, right, I think I've kind of trimmed that up enough. So I'll put those little bits in the bin shortly. Right, what you are going to need to do this, so the smallest hook I currently own is a two millimeter hook. So that's what I used on the other side. And I literally just like kind of puncture in and do it and then after you've done one row of single crochet and um, well I just went back to what I was using to make my granny squares it's a it's a well loved hook this one and um, so I just one row with this straight into the denim and then a second row with this so yeah let me just 
get this all done and I'll show you what I do. I'm just using a Stylecraft double knit wisteria for this. That's what I made my patches from. So I'm just going to put that there. Okay, I'm going to start underneath the armpit. So this is like a really, really thick bit here. Oh, one thing you're also going to need, if I can find where I've put it, okay? One of these, so it needs to be like sharp and fat, okay? So just a needle that like you would use for sewing your ends in needs to be quite sharp and fat. So let me just stick that there for a second. So on this one, I started under here. And this, like, obviously this was trial and error because I'm not following a pattern. I'm just purely winging it at this point. So I started off like a little bit rubbish and I wasn't keeping them in line as well. But as I progressed around, I kind of got used to doing it. So I wasn't firstly sticking, you know, my hook through these bits first, but I found a way to do it. So on this side, okay, what you're going to do is if, I mean, your your jacket or whatever gilet you're working on might look different, but this is purely what I've done for this denim one here. So as you can see, it's got two seams or two, are they seams? I don't know two rows of stitching there okay I'm just kind of we use this one as a guide because it goes all the way around so that's pretty much where I'm aiming to keep all of my stitches around about so it started off with my little my smallest hook probably could have done with like a much smaller one but never mind so I'm just gonna push it through and because these hooks these are just off Amazon this hook gets fatter at the bottom I'm gonna push it right in and give it a wiggle and then it makes the hole like much more easier to do so you just grab your yarn okay and I mean I'm a right faff with small hooks but I'm gonna try so then just pull it through okay I didn't have any bother with it because I used the fat piece of the hook to make the hole bigger and then I'm literally just gonna tie this on I'm gonna double knot it I'm not gonna pull it tight I'm just gonna pull it and kind of put my bow to the back like that so it's not tight it's just kind of sitting there nice I don't want to like wrinkle the denim or anything and then I'm going to double knot it like that okay so it's not too tight it's all right and then I'm going to stick my hook back in and then I'm going to pull it through again so it's nice and tall so up to about the level of there and then I'm going to chain one okay I'm just going to zoom you in a bit more so I've chained one now this bit is really thick on the other side I didn't like go into that bit there so just for keeping things symmetrical I'm just going to kind of jump past it so I'm just going to go into here so using those stitches as a guide and you just literally want to like puncture it through and then get the base of your hook there like push it in and it just widens it okay grab the yarn and then pull it up nice and tall and then leave it quite loose because obviously afterwards when we go for the next round we're going to be using a bigger hook so just leave it nice and loose okay so I'm going to find the next one not too far away I mean I need to the other side was around about 118 ish stitches I might have lost count a couple of times going around but I'm pretty sure it's around that mark so yeah I'm gonna just puncture into the next bit I'm not doing them too far it's pretty much like one almost for every stitch but not quite so my next one I'm gonna do there I'm just gonna like puncture it through make it fatter grab my yarn and pull it through like that okay and I'm gonna do this all the way up here so just kind of going over that all the way up here using that as a guide and then when I get to this tricky thicker bit here I'm gonna show you what I do when I get there Okay, apologies for the change of scenery, but my craft room is absolutely sweltering. It's like 27 degrees outside and the craft room upstairs gets sun beaming into it all day. So just for me doing this bit, this is just what it looks like, how far I've got. Obviously, it's not perfect. It's not going to be perfect because I'm not a machine. I'm just, you know, a person. So that's what it's looking like so far. I'm OK with it being just a little bit wiggly. Um, so, yeah, I'm still I'm going to get up to that bit in about, I don't know, five minutes because the way I'm doing it, because denim's such like a, a, a thick, tough material, it does take a good few minutes to get a bit, you know, to get it done. I mean, for the first one, it took me the best part of 45 minutes to do it. And then I had this material in the inside. So anyway, I'm going to keep going. I'm going to get up to that bit there and then I'm going to go back into the sweltering heat of the craft room and show you exactly what I do with a needle to puncture that bit there. 
Okay, I'm back in the volcanic craft room. So I've got to this bit here, and I think I've done a pretty good job. I mean, it's not totally even, but I'm not mad at it. So there's some little frayed bits, but it's fine. So what I do with this bit, because, I mean, this is far too thick for you to pierce that hook through, because I'm working with a 2mm. So what I would do, just draw that out so I don't lose it, is I kind of make holes along where I've been going, and I just do it with this needle. So it's a bit tough, but so I make a hole. Let me just show you. So I'm literally making a hole like that. And it is quite tough to pull this through. You might need a thimble. I don't actually have a thimble. I've kind of been using the desk so I can just kind of pop it through. So that's that through there. And then, not that hook, that's the thick one. So this, can you see that there's a tiny little hole now? So I'm just going to, without having anything on my hook, because I've pulled up that thread so it's not going to unravel. I'm just going to push my hook through there, like that. So it's gone through, and then obviously I want this fat bit to really like open it up. So I'm just like swiveling that there, like that. And then that hook, uh, that hole now should be big enough for me to do a next single crochet. So pushing it back in, grabbing my yarn, and then it will be fiddly doing it this way. And plus it's a small hook so it can like pull your yarn apart because this DK is made from like three different strands. So I've been like there goes like battling to keep it all as one strand. So there's just a little piece of denim there that's stopping me pull that through. So there we go. Where is it? I don't think I got all my strands. There we go. Right, so it's there. It's properly through now. So keeping it nice and loose. Just grabbing my yarn and just pulling it like that okay I'm gonna do another one because they seem to be nicely spaced I've pulled a bit of denim through there but it's fine nobody's gonna like stop me in the street and say oh no you didn't do your jacket properly um, and if they do I would just be like I'd like to see you make one so here I'm just doing it again putting that through there we go. so there's a little hole I'm gonna just make it bigger using the the neck of my crochet hook there we go like that so it gets nice and bigger okay then put my hook back into my yarn put it through grab my yarn and that came through nice there and then there we go right okay i've not run into the material bit yet so i'm just going to continue using my stitch and if you can see the stitching just using my stitching as a guide on my line to keep it nice and straight. I'm absolutely sweating buckets and here's me sewing like sleeves onto a jacket when it's supposed to be autumn. So yeah, I'm going to go downstairs where it's nice and cool. I'm going to finish up this sleeve and then I'm going to talk to you a bit more about um, actually trying to attach these things on. Let me just zoom out. So. Yeah, once I've finished doing all the way around there, I'm going to talk to you about these. I've purposely not done my cuffs just yet, purely because I want to have these both attached and then I want to see how long it is before I actually do the cuff. So yeah, right, I'm going to go downstairs, find a cold beverage, find a cold spot to sit and I'm going to finish this off. So for you it'll be two seconds, for me it's probably going to be about 30 odd minutes. Okay, that's way longer than expected. So I've just finished going all around there. Probably took me about the best part of an hour just to get all the way around because it was so faffy, especially because like it was really thick here with this material. All I'm gonna do to join the round, if I just zoom you in a little bit there. Okay, so all I'm gonna do, I'm literally just gonna go into the first stitch there and I'm just gonna slip stitch. I'm keeping it really loose like that. So I'm gonna pull it up and then I'm going to switch from the 2mm to my very well loved 4.5. Okay, and because I've done it really loose, despite having such a small hook before, um, I should have no bother in going into each stitch to do this second round. So what I like to do, I know I've pulled up a loop, but I'm going to go back in, pull it up, and that kind of starts me with a single crochet. And then there's the next one. So see how the this hook's going in all right. So I'm literally just going to single crochet my way around. 
and then once I've done that I will be ready to join the sleeves on and I have absolutely no idea how I'm going to do that um, so I'm just kind of kind of figure it out once I've done this row okay right so here's the first one I did and here is a sleeve I've left a really really long tail like exceedingly long because I wasn't sure how long I was going to need the um, like the tail to actually stitch this on okay right I'm threaded up so here is the massive tail off my sleeve and I'm going to do, I'm going to try back loop only, back loop only kind of thing. So this is the armhole tail which is moving out of the way and this is off the sleeve. So I'm going to join it. So I want to start it right at the bottom so if I mess anything up then it's not that noticeable. So going back loop only, back loop only, I'm going to go into this back loop, hang on, up here. I'm going to go into the back loop of there. And then I'm going to go into the back loop of that one there. Okay, so I'm just going to pull that through because the tail is massive. I've just moved you to a slightly better angle. So I'm pretty much just going back loop only, back loop only. And then pulling my humongous tail through. Which will not be as humongous when I get to the end of this. Okay, so again, the back loop only and the back loop only. Pull the tail through, careful it doesn't mess itself up because it's that long if you're doing the same thing. Okay, back loop, back loop, and I'm pretty much just going to do this all the way around. I think because of the difference of stitch count, there's probably going to be like where I have to, I don't know, put two of these to one of these, but that'll probably be further around. So I'm going to stitch this together, I'm just winging it, so I'm going to stitch it together and just see what it looks like. So. I'll see you in a second once I have stitched it all the way around. Okay, I've kind of sewed up past one patch on there. And yeah, I mean, you can see that's where it's kind of, you know, being stitched on, but I don't mind it. It kind of looks like the way these are stitched here. So I don't mind. Nobody's going to pull me up on the street, like I said before, and be like, you stitched that wrong. So yeah, I'm going to continue around. What I am going to do though, because silly me, I forgot to put stitch markers on it. So I'm going to put some stitch markers on and just get my placement to be perfect because like I'm not just going to sew and then end up with like, you know, like a whole bit here that still needs to be sewed on when this one's like pretty much all attached. So yeah, I'm going to do some stitch markers and then I will get it all sewed on and then show you what it looks like. Okay, right, it's attached. So it fit perfectly. It's sewn all the way around, fit perfectly. It's actually too long. But it's fine. If I put a cuff on this bit here, then it's just going to look kind of balloony and I'm okay with that. So, I mean, it's the first time I've ever done this. So, yeah, I was bound to like, it's a learning curve. So now I just know that if I need to do this again with this size granny square, which is one, two, three, four, five. So if I'm doing granny squares with like five rounds, I only actually need to have 16 of them to make a sleeve. I could widen it out and make it like a flippy sleeve, but I like a cuff. So I'm going to, yeah, I'm going to sort that out once I've joined the other sleeve. So I'm going to go and do that now, but I need to take this off because it is so hot. It is so ridiculously hot. Okay, right, to make this cuff. So I'm just going to join my yarn in here where the last row finished. And then I'm going to tie it in a double knot just so that it definitely will not budge when it's on. There we go. Okay, right, since this cuff is too wide, I need to make it narrower. So I'm just going to go around with slip stitches. Okay, so I'm going to chain one first because that's what I did in the last one. And then every other like stitch, I'm just going to slip stitch. So I'm going to skip one and then slip one. Okay, I'm going to skip that one and then I'm going to go into that one with a slip stitch. And then this is going to shrink it. So skip into there with a slip stitch. Skip this into there with a slip stitch and I'm going to do that all the way around. So skip and slip. Okay and I'll show you what it looks like once I've done that. Okay right I'm just getting to the end of my slip stitch row. So where did I join? I can't even remember where I joined. I think it was here. Um, Let me just slip stitch into here. It doesn't have to be perfect. I mean it's gonna it's gonna look good anyway. I think that was my first one, so I need that to get in. Okay. 
Mm, there we go. Right, okay. So that round is done. So that's kind of closed it off. And if I try and put my hand in, that's pretty much where I want it. If I need to shrink it down a bit more, I can. Right, I just need to remind myself of what I did, even though it was like, I don't know, like an hour ago. Um, ah, right, okay. So what I did next is I did like a stacked uh, double. First, I chained one. I'm trying to get you into the shot there. So I chained one. And then I just went back into the stitch. And then I... Uh, getting stuck. There we go. Made it look like I'd done a single crochet like that. And then... So it's like a stacked um, double crochet there. So that's my stacked double crochet. The chain one kind of disappears into it anyway. And then for like each slip stitch, I kind of just went into it and did a double crochet. So I did yarn over into the slip stitch pull through two pull through two okay then i went to the next one i did yarn over which i didn't just do there so yarn over pull through two pull through two okay and that's all i did all the way around so going into like each slip stitch pretty much and just going around so yeah i will see you when i've done this round when I've done it properly, because apparently I can't do that. Okay, right, I got to the end of that round, so what I'm going to do is just slip stitch into the top of the first double crochet that I did. Just like that. Okay, and now we're going to start doing um, front post, back post, front post, back post. So, chain one on this one, and then this first stitch here, you want to yarn over, and then go behind it, grab the yarn, pull it through, and then pull it through. So that chain one is disguised. And then into the next stitch, you're going to do a back loop like that. And then pull through two, pull through two. I'm trying to keep it on the screen, hang on, because it's so awkward with the camera here. Okay, next one is front loop. So we just pull through two, pull through two. Okay, and, and then that one is a back loop. So we'll go pull through two, pull through two. Okay, excuse the mess, I've got purple yarn everywhere after doing this. Uh, okay, the next one's a front post. So pull through two, pull through two. And you're just going to do this literally all the way around. So back post, pull through two, pull through two. And it just gives you a nice effect. So I'm trying to think how many rounds, oops, how many rounds of this did I do? So on this one, I did uh, one, two, three, four, five. Looks like five rounds of it. Yeah, one, two, three, four, five. So I did five rounds. So I just started each one exactly the same. I chained one and went straight into a front post. Then I just went back loop, front loop, back loop, front loop, back loop, front loop. Um, if you get to the end and you've got like two back loops or two front loops, that's fine. I mean, who's really going to look like stare at your sleeve and be like, oh my God, you've, you've missed something there. You've not missed anything. It's just the way that it lies. It needs to be like a, um, an odd number or an even number. I don't even know at this point. It needs to be like a specific number for you to get like, you know, back front, back front, back front. So yeah, I'm going to do myself another few rounds of this. And if you need to see how I did that first stitch, then, you know, just rewind the video because that's what I'm going to do for each one. I'll just go into the top chain then I'll chain one and then I'll just straight into like a, a front post and then I'll just continue the round. So I'll see you when this is done. I think I might just attach this one and then talk to you guys at the end because, oh my God, this has taken so long. I just want this to be done. I want the cold weather. It is too hot. I need to go and get a cold drink before I finish this. I'll see you in a minute when I've got the whole thing done. And here is the finished article. Okay, I am so, so pleased. Look at these sleeves. On the back. Okay, I mean, I can't really close the jacket, but that's just the way my mum made me. But yeah, I absolutely love this. This is so cool. Um, like you will see in the video, I did um, I did five rows, but then I kind of like, I frogged it. And then I just made it like two rows there, two rows from that side. Then I joined it because I thought that the purple was just a bit too long. So I did modify that, but I just attached it the same way. Just I preferred it with less of like a, a long purple bit. So 
I really like this and it's so comfy because I mean the gilet was comfy anyway but this now I'm just ready for the cold weather and boy do we need it this heat wave needs to leave so um if you did make it this far thank you so much um if you could like comment ask questions and especially subscribe that would really help the channel grow there's like nearly 500 people now which is really crazy because this is only going to be my third video so thank you so much if you have subscribed if you just happen to come across me in youtube suggestions you know press subscribe hang around to see what i get up to my next video is probably going to be an in-depth tutorial on a hexagon cardigan because like since like thousands of you have watched the barbie one people have been asking can you show me how to do the tapestry crochet can you do an in-depth tutor an in-depth tutorial can you show me how to do sleeves i've just had comments coming from like social media and youtube so yes that full in-depth tutorial is coming just give me a couple of weeks because you know your girl's got a full-time job so i need to pay those bills but yes that's coming so yeah any questions comments leave them down below and i will try to get back to you as soon as i can but thank you so much for watching and I'm going to see you guys in the next one. Bye.